So that is squirting out water. Oh, I'm Emily. This is Will. And that's Blue Dog. And we live on our sailboat, Appa. Catch us every other Wednesday on YouTube. And welcome to the Sailing Bison. In case you missed it, on our last episode, we had a sail so smooth, it brought on some serious nostalgia. And Will became mortal enemies with this here trigger fish. Will dropped the fish. Water. Uh, We're gearing up to take on our very first guests aboard Alpha, and we want to make sure he's spick and span for their arrival. First on my to-do list, after breakfast of course, fix this giant hole in our city. As you can see, there's no longer a gaping hole here, but this isn't dirty leather. It's actually just crumbling away. So eventually, at some point, we're gonna need a much bigger patch, but don't have the material to do that. So I just threw a quick kind of messy stitch in there, but there's no longer a giant hole in the cushion. So, small improvement. Ready? Whoop. Boy. So we are gonna go find some boobies and we said she saw some boobies up north here So we're gonna grab the camera and go see if we can find them and after that we'll be going to the beach You wanna go to the beach Lou? Yeah, so yeah double adventure. We've had a long day on the boat mm -hmm. Doing projects probably about a 95% success rate on them. It's time to get off the boat. Emily's getting set up for a workout on the beach and I am feeling better in the knee but not good enough to work out and certainly not good enough to work out on the sand. So I got my camera set up and I'm going to go look for things called Apache Tears and also arrowheads. If you're a fan of Johnny Cash or just a history nerd like us, you might have heard the phrase Apache Tears before. Physically, they're small, rounded pieces of volcanic glass known as obsidian, or dragon glass if you're into that sort of thing. The name, however, has tragic origins. In the 1870s during the Apache Wars, the U.S. Cavalry continued its push to settle the western half of the continent, while Apache tribes fought to keep control of their lands. In modern-day Arizona, during one such battle, the cavalry attacked a group of Apache warriors, killing most of the party. Those who remained, after being chased to the top of a mountain, chose death over defeat and rode their horses off the cliffside. It is said that in their grief, the warriors' families mourned them so deeply that their tears turned to stone as they met the earth. Legend has it that whoever carries one of these stones will never shed another tear, for those Apache have wept in place of your sorrow. You can find them in abundance here in San Juanico. A short walk down the dirt road and you'll have a pocket full. While Will searched for his small pieces of history, I hung out on the beach looking for a different kind of rock. A heavy rock. One good for picking up and putting down. Moving my body every day is something I do not take for granted. As Will's smorgasbord of injuries continues to expand, I'm making sure to keep myself in fighting shape. You never know when you're going to have to crawl into the bilge, or squeeze into the lazarette, or run from stern to bow and back again while taking 25 knots on the beam. Not to mention the vast improvement it's had on my mental health.
One of the best parts about living on a sailboat is being mostly self-sufficient. We are incredibly grateful that the previous owners of our boat installed a water maker, but it hadn't seen any action in almost three years. Will did some maintenance and filter replacement before we left San Diego, and it's been running really well since then. Any cruiser will tell you that having the means to make potable water while sailing is an absolute game changer. Pretty much any time we're underway, we try to fill our tanks. About 10 miles into our trip up here, however, we realized we had a problem. During one of his routine checks, Will noticed some water in the bilge. All right, that's our bilge there. There it is. You can notice there is a problem somewhere. We got water coming in. While it wasn't much, Previously unaccounted for water in a boat is never a good sign. Something's not going right. We checked underneath the engine. It has its own little compartment uh, for catching water and oil. That's dry, so it's not the engine. We checked all the through holes. All those were dry. These are just visual checks that I did. Uh, so the next thing we'll do, since that water's in the aft compartment of the bilge, we'll go to the back of the boat and see if anything's leaking back there. We do have the water maker running. This is just the pump for it, filters. Uh, the pressure looks normal, about 75 PSI. That's, that's pretty much what it always is when it's running. We'll go back here and check. Uh, and you can see right there is our issue. So that is squirting out water. It was a little drip before, which is why we have the bucket there. Uh, but now it's a pretty substantial leak. Uh, so that's not, we don't want to fill up the bilge. The water's running down here. In through there. And up forward to the bilge. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn the water maker off. And uh, we'll have to repair that bolt. All right. Emily has just gone hiking with our boat neighbors, Rochambeau. And... Uh, my knee's still not well enough to go on a hike, but it is uh, doing well enough that I can get around the boat today. So, what that means is I'm going to fix the water maker today. So I'm going to try to fix what broke. Uh, there's another piece that is going to break soon, so I'll get ahead of that one, fix it as well. And then I'll also change out the membrane today. We've had a spare membrane on board for a little while now. We tow the line on the water being within the parts per million salinity uh, threshold, the good threshold. So since I'm gonna have the unit out today to fix the broken pieces, I figured I might as well replace the membrane while it's nice and easy. So yeah, you guys will come along, another Will's Workshop. All right, so here's the water maker. Get the bucket out of here. Uh, this was the old solution uh, for the water dripping out. Uh, a towel and a bucket. And honestly, it worked well enough. It lasted about six months, so nice, easy fix. But now it's time to fix it for real. <sighs> Uh, right now I'm trying to decide what's the best way to work on this thing. I kind of want to pull the whole unit out. I don't know how practical that is. So it looks like there's four wing nuts. One, two, three, four. That if I remove those, this backing plate, which the water maker is actually attached to, the whole thing should pop off. Just looking at the connecting pieces, I'll need to remove this water hose, this water hose, it looks like these lines are long enough that I could bring it back to the workshop just right over here. And I would also need to remove uh, the fresh water outlet. So this is actually where the good water comes out of. I could also remove this whole unit here. Leave it here. Leave this connected. And disconnect this one, it looks like. I don't really want to do that because this I have no more of. So if I break this, I can't fix it. Whereas I have extra of this blue PEX hose, PEX hose. I don't know if you say PEX or PEX, but I have more of it. All right, so I think I'll get to it. Taking off this hose and that hose from this PEX unit, then I should be able to unbolt these four wing nuts and the whole thing come out. All right, let's get some tools. 
screwdriver and I brought the bucket back as well. I'm not sure what still has water in this system and what doesn't. I'll hold this bucket underneath these hoses as I take them off, uh, just in case they do have water in them. Alright, so that's even easier. This is a quick disconnect, so. I just dropped my bucket, so all the water I caught is now in the bilge. I'll take this one off now. Oh, I really don't want to break that, so grab the heat gun. I can't pull it off now. Flawless. Nice. Alright, so we got most things off already. I can't remember if I can get this by hand or not. Nope, alright, crescent wrench. Connected, that just comes out. Now, lastly, we'll check these wires. So, now go ahead, we'll take these wing nuts off, and the whole unit should come out. I have no idea how heavy this is. I don't think it's going to weigh that much. Move some of this stuff, I'll try to get in here and pull it out. General best practice, leave your hoses up. All right, let's get into the workshop. All right, so I did get the J pipe off entirely. It's like that, the screwed inside of there, that one inside of there. So now we'll just go ahead and clean it up. See, it's pretty dirty. All that corrosion is what caused it to leak. Get it all cleaned up, put it back together. There was a grommet o ring uh, that was real corroded. Fit right inside of there. Inside of there. See that o ring just has no life left in it and cracked. That's probably that crack right there. It's probably where we saw the squirting out come from. Obviously, I don't have any spare parts for this. Wasn't expecting you know, this particular problem. So I'm gonna have to use a gasket maker which I've used before successfully on boat, on uh, car parts. So first things first, we'll get this cleaned up, then we'll figure out how to reseal it all more effectively. No matter what the solution is, all the components are gonna have to be nice and dry. So we'll go ahead and wipe this out now. It's time to dry. While I'm cleaning the rest, you can just look at all that rust. That's nice and dry. Uh, any residual wetness will just get cleaned up over time and I fix and clean these components. We use a soft bristle brush, just get the large debris off. And I'll do the real work here with a stainless brush. I always just like to grab it with a tool rather than my hands. That stainless little bristles are really good at poking fingers. if you notice but it's actually starting to pit there a little bit so it's gone beyond just surface rust if you start to break into the metal which you don't love but i'm taking all this into account because i'm really trying to figure out what sealant i'm going to use you have teflon tape you have gasket maker i could super glue that back together you got 4200 uh, which actually one of the manufacturers recommended 4200 to me also have uh, plumber's goo blue goo I'm trying to figure out as i clean it how bad is the damage in that one form, how significant of a sealant adhesive I need. Yeah, like it might be hard to see on camera, but all of the threads are pinning as well. So, really shame to see that. I'm guessing these are just dissimilar metals. 
and electrolysis happened over time. It's important during this whole process that you don't use any solvents. There are two things that kill these water makers. Uh, one's oil and the other is chlorine. Usually you would see me in here with PB blaster or coil, uh, three in one lube, I love that stuff. But uh, for this job, it's gotta be all, all dry. This is clean. We'll remove this 4200 from the previous fix job that somebody did and can clean up some surface rust. There's a really great product called Marine Formula. So I got it right here. D-Bond Marine Formula. Uh, that stuff works wonders for removing marine adhesive sealants. It's actually the only thing I've found so far that would get 4200 off. It still takes a long time, uh, but it's no longer impossible when you use that. I would normally, again, be using that just to make this job more efficient and more effective. You'll really get all this 4200 off, but it has petroleum in it. So I don't want to ruin this machine, so sticking with manual. While I'm cleaning this, I'm also debating if I want to keep going and try and take this out. It's really in there, and I don't need to break it because it wasn't actively leaking. So it doesn't technically need to be fixed. That old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Might hold true here. All right, all in all, this is cleaned out. This is cleaned out. The nuts cleaned out. So all that's ready to go back in. And this is the big debate. Do I keep going to get this out or not? I don't know why, but it's actually coming out super easy right now. Uh, so that makes my decision a hell of a lot easier. Might as well just take it up. See, this has a nice O-ring on it one that uh, is working. So if I had more O-rings, that might fix the problem altogether, but I don't. No pitting on this one. All the threads on this one are good. Much easier to clean up as well. Pretty good, boys. All right, get some Q-tips. Get that out even cleaner. Clean out the insides of these. And then uh, we'll start putting it back together. Got my Q-tips. I've decided to go with the 4200. Um, the bad part about this plan is it's going to be real if I ever need to take this off again. Everything's nice and clean. Looks good. Really wish I had another one of these O rings. But hey, 4200 is pretty, pretty good stuff. I'm just making sure I didn't get any on the flush piece there. So the O-ring isn't seating. Uh, I'm loosening it up. I'm trying to just shove the O-ring in there. So I definitely might have made this worse. We'll only be able to tell when uh try to turn it on again. I'm really happy with how that one went on without the O-ring. Curious, curious, interesting. We'll see, man, we'll see. While it's still wet, you get some acetone, which I think also has petroleum. Now everything internally is fine. That's all together. I'm gonna turn the camera off and do the other side and uh, we'll be ready for the membrane. I got all the pieces back in. This side took like 20 minutes compared to this one, which definitely took more than an hour. Uh, but hey, that's how projects go. Everything's back together. Uh, I did have the same issue on this side. On this side, the nuts that hold the J-pipe in both had rubber washers. And in both of these as well, as I cranked them down, the washer just popped out uh, and became ineffective. So these bottom ones, um, they're not screwed in as tight as they can be. They're screwed in as tight as they can be without the grommet popping out. Uh, and then this top one here was a much thinner grommet. It was like a flat one compared to these two, which were more like O-rings. Uh, so this one, I did get almost all the way cranked down. It was a really negligible difference between when the thing started to pop out and fully forked. My hope though is that the 4200 in the threads means that no water is going to even be able to get up to the O-ring uh, at all. I think that's how it's supposed to work, hopefully, and that would solve all of our problems. So now I'm just gonna reassemble it, 
clean up my workspace a little bit and then I'll change out the membrane. More than anything, I hope it didn't make it worse. Of course I hope that it works, but... Ooh, didn't like that. Looks like I installed the plate on backwards. So this metal piece up here is hitting. Off she comes. We begin. actually back together now uh, it's time to change up the membrane I have it up here we bought this membrane probably about three or four months ago because we thought this one was dead I was producing water at about 500 parts per million it's actually gotten better over time uh, we got down to 300 parts per million and now it's going back up so while I have the system removed I'm just gonna go ahead and replace it it should be producing at zero parts per million uh, this is salinity I'm talking about parts per million of salt for water then your safety thresholds in the US the FDA says it has to be, maybe it's the EPA, I'm not sure which one, but they say 400 parts per million and under is safe, and everywhere else in the world says 500 parts per million and under are safe. So we're just towing that line again, time to pop it out. This does actually have instructions online. Again, it's just a Word doc without numbered steps or anything. Uh, so I thought I'd make a video of me doing it. It says if you only want to remove one end, uh, do the one that says brine inlet. So that's on this side. It's just hand tight. Down this one here, just to get rid of the water to come out. As I'm removing this seal at the end, I'm just wiggling out this piece that's being held in by it. It's got a twist. Also, wash my hands. Again, what kills these machines are petroleum or chlorine. Just to make sure I remember that. I think it's getting close here. Here's the water coming out. All right. That's why I put the towel down. Useful. Now I'm inspecting the O-ring here. I don't have any spares, so it better be good. If it does, it looks good. Drop the pliers. Put a little towel around it. I don't scratch it. This is going to become our spare. I don't think I'm going to throw it away. More, a lot more water, more than I was prepared for. I may or may not need to reuse that. Interesting, this side doesn't have no ring. I don't know why that is. I'll we'll go ahead and put this up here. Right, so far, this is really I have to jinx that. Sorry, handle this. I'm just gonna wipe my hands off again. Let's keep this as clean as possible. Okay, only the one end has. The o-ring it doesn't look like i'm supposed to take this plastic off it's super hard to tell that one still has a sticker on it as well so i'm just going to assume this is okay and this was the side that was out make sure it's dirty that seems to be it so just the last step here is to go ahead and just put it all back That's great, it even ended exactly where it started, which I like, a little piece of confirmation there. That's nice and tight. I got it off with hand strength, so I'm not gonna tighten it down with any mechanical strength. That's the water maker. Hopefully this works. These should no longer leak out of the Clark pump, and we have a new membrane in there. So we should be producing higher quality water without it dripping. I'm gonna bring it down here and show you what these look like now that they're sealed.
All right, it's been 36 hours. Uh, so all of the 4200 that I used in these compression uh, fittings and the nuts going into the Clark pump should all be dry. It only takes 24 hours to dry, so there should be well and truly dry. So we're gonna start it up again and see how it went. I'm pretty nervous because at this point, if it didn't work, I don't know how to get that 4200 out of there. I'd probably be buying new parts, uh, which we always try to avoid as broke sailors. So. Uh, because there's a new membrane in there, uh, we're going to flush the system. So here I'm opening up the pressure relief valve of the Clark pump. So the water is going to pass through and right out of the membrane, uh, flushing out all of the pickling juice that it came with from the factory. All right. So I got the electric turned off behind me. Go ahead and turn that on. I've already opened up the through hole. We'll go ahead and uh, get a comfortable spot here. Go ahead and turn it off. All right, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it in the video or not, but there is water coming out of the discharge tube. So there is water passing through the system. That's good. You might be able to hear it in the pump as well. The high pressure pump over there. At this point, previously, it would have been leaking out a little bit already. So no leaks right now. That's great. Just again, still pretty early on. Uh, we'll run it like this for about 10 minutes and just ensure no leaks happen. So far, so good. It has been 35 minutes. So all of the pickling juice should have been run out of the membrane as I've left it wide open. Uh, still after 35 minutes, no leaks. So that's great news. Uh, before I did this work, it would have already leaked. It would have leaked in the first minute. So now we'll start adding pressure. Uh, one of the other ways that I had to rig this system because it's old and broken is the motherboard, the computer that's supposed to run all of it is broken, it's fried. So this whole mechanism here with all the gizmos and wires that used to determine when the water was good enough to be sent to the tank or bad enough that it should be thrown overboard. That doesn't work anymore. So I just intercepted the water outlet and I put in a Y valve here. So I've got my Y valve set to uh, bad water and I've got to go into a bucket behind me in the workshop, probably open it, or sorry, I'll probably close it about halfway to let that pressure build slowly. Again, checking for leaks and all of the water that it produces is gonna end up in the five gallon bucket behind me, not in our water tanks. So here we go, start adding some pressure. Uh, to add pressure, uh, there's no like symbol on this that says how much is there. You can hear it a little bit if you listen closely, I'm not sure you will on the camera, uh, but I like to watch this. So this thing spins when water passes over it, it's a little brown thing. So halfway pressure for me is that it only spins when water is being drawn in and not being pressurized. So you can hear it squeaking. It's starting to do some stuff there in the Clark pump. And I'll just keep an eye on this brown thing, get it to the right amount of spinning. And then I'll leave it there for probably another 10 minutes or so. Uh, halfway closed, halfway pressurized. And again, keep checking for leaks. Yeah, also this thing produces a lot of pressure. It's about a thousand PSI, or about, well actually I don't know the translation of that to barn, but it's about a thousand PSI, 10 times your normal bike tire, your racing bike tire. Uh, so, want to be making sure that there's no issues with it, because if it were ever to pop, it would really do some damage. So far so good. I'll go ahead. All right, it's been about 15 minutes at the half pressure. Everything's looking fine still, no leaks still. Uh, it's pretty easy to tell there's no leaks because everything's really dry to start. So you do a visual check, but you're also just checking everything around there, no water. So we're gonna pump up the pressure to 100% now. Let's spin this all the way right. I can hear it, but the motor there, now it's picking up the pressure, so it's running uh, harder. It's gonna be pressurizing this membrane, again, that fancy filter. And now we're going to start actually stripping the salt out of the fresh water. So separating the salt from the water to make it fresh water. 
Oh, we got a leak here. Where's that coming from? Okay, that's just coming from this hose here. Uh, that's an easy fix. Oh man, we got a leak over here too. No leaks over there. Damn. All right, this is an easy fix. Let's tighten that up. Uh, but this leak over here, there's not going to be any fixing that with my current tools. This was an easy fix. Just tighten up that hose. It's no longer leaking. I'm not sure you'll be able to see it on camera, but there's just one little pinhole that's leaking. So yeah, not leaking nearly as much as it was uh, when we went into this project, but I was hoping for no leaks, and there's definitely still a leak. So we'll put a towel down, go back to the, uh, the easy solution for now, and uh, we'll think about what to do next. All in all, it's an improvement. We're back to running the system without serious water coming in, but uh, yeah, obviously not 100%. Uh, so I actually think I'm just gonna put more 4200 right over that pinhole. You really gotta strain to see it, so hopefully a little more 4200 right over top of that, and uh, we'll be back to no leaks. Uh, it's gonna have to dry first, obviously, so we'll run it today as is, get some water, so for now, we'll test the water, see how this new membrane's working. So if you remember, the motherboard isn't working for this, so I do everything manually. Uh, so what I do is I just grab a standard glass. This is my discharge tube, so I'll fill it up a bit. I've got a manual salinity probe. Go ahead and turn that on. Right now it's reading zero parts per million. Dip it in there. 147 parts per million, so really not too bad. Uh, definitely below that 400 threshold, the 400 we're getting before. I did expect it to be closer to zero, but hey, this is still good. So we'll go ahead and we'll flip the Y valve right here. Back here. So we'll flip this Y valve, and now water is being sent into our tanks. Drip still dripping. Now that we have effectively fried your brain with 20 minutes of water maker repair, how about a nice leisurely walk along a prehistoric seafloor? Mm -hmm.